Hey everyone, this is Rising Sun Retro here, and I wanted to talk about a game I played at the start of this pandemic. So living in Japan, we had lockdowns for about three months at the beginning of 2020. And since I couldn't go out, I wanted to get to a few games on my PS3 that were just sitting on the hard drive. I never ended up beating a lot of them, and one of those happened to be Resident Evil. I played the Japanese versions of the game since I think it's really effective for studying, and it's one of my favorite ways to learn new words and vocabulary. So today, let's take a look back at Biohazard. So, Biohazard was released in Japan on March 22nd, 1996, with Resident Evil coming out in the US eight days later. And when you compare the two versions, the US one is actually censored, with the Japanese one featuring a longer cinematic and more gore during the game itself. Besides the censorship, the Japanese version is also a little bit easier, with auto-aim being enabled by default, enemies taking less bullets to defeat, more ink ribbons scattered around, and characters having a bit more health. The original Japanese release features the song Yume de Awarasenai, which translates to I Won't Let This End as a Dream. Apparently the game's producers actually didn't want this song in there, but Capcom higher-ups struck a deal with the artist and had to put it in. I don't know, I didn't like it as much at first, but it grew on me. What do you all think? And so I think most people know that Capcom is famous for re-releasing their games a bunch of times and Resident Evil is no exception. The Director's Cut comes with an all new arranged mode, which not only mixes up the item placement, but it gives you some new unique camera angles too. And they even stuck in a beginner's mode too. One of my favorite parts is this nifty little bonus disc with a trial of Resident Evil 2. It only takes you through the beginning, but if you like betas, it's a nice treat. And so for a quick rundown of the game, we got Chris and Jill, our two protagonists. You play through each of their stories and you try to escape from the dreaded Spencer Mansion. Seems simple enough, except you're stuck in corridors with hungry zombies and other creatures. Sure, the zombies are less varied than in later games, but for a PS1 game, it's really not that bad. It's pretty impressive in my opinion. Chris essentially acts as the hard mode, and so that means he has less item space, and because he lacks the title of King of Unlocking, he has to go and find small keys in order to open up doors and drawers. Jill is an officer with dubious skills, so on top of more item space, you don't need to go and find keys. In total, there's three areas, the mansion, the courtyard, slash guardhouse, and then the underground lab. You'll visit each area a few times to get different items, and there's going to be a lot of backtracking. But it's fun to explore every part of the area, I think. Both characters have their own helper, with Jill having Barry and Chris having Rebecca. But we'll talk a little bit more about her in a later video. And let me tell you, even on the so-called easier version, this game is tough. It might be a combination of the controls and difficulty, but this game is hard and it definitely took me a while to beat on the first playthrough. So there's a lot of things to love about this game. Of course, Resident Evil is known for its good puzzles and I think the ones here are great. They don't seem out of place either. I mean, the mansion is generally freaky, so having an art gallery just fits. And I have to say, I just love the music. There's something about composers in this era working within the constraints of the consoles and putting out masterpieces. Put some headphones on, get in a dark room, and you'll be transported back to the 1990s. It's the recommended way to go about playing this game, and in fact, all RE games should be played this way. Just do it. Okay, so I talked about what's good, and I'm gushing over the music, the atmosphere, and the design, but of course we know it's not perfect. And my goodness... Those tank controls are tough to get over at first because they are stiff. I know some people might not like inventory management, but I don't mind it that much actually. Chris can be tough because he lacks those extra item slots, but it's definitely doable. It does get a bit annoying though when you're in a high pressure situation, but hey, it's survival horror after all. And speaking of horror, there is no autosave. Nothing like that. You have to make sure you save from a typewriter because if you don't and you die after making a lot of progress You have to go all the way back. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal right now as I'm explaining it But trust me you'll play the same part over and over again Get this false sense of confidence and stop saving because well you just have things figured out don't you? 
and then you make it further, and then die because of a random hunter or something, then you have to restart, and it's just so disheartening. Okay, so what's the deal? Can I recommend this game in 2022? Is it worth playing? Well, sort of. If you can get past the outdated controls, the save system, and the menus, I think you'll have a good time. But again, the controls are a huge part of the game, and I get if it's not everyone's cup of tea. The game was a game changer, and it's fun to go back and experience something that helped revive the zombie genre. But at the same time, if you're only focused on the story of the game and don't care about the gameplay itself, just go play the remake. Of course it has better controls, graphics, and so on. But me personally, I still enjoy Resident Evil 1 though, with its faults and all. That being said, I'd be lying if I didn't say it was outshined by its sequels, and it's a bit of a tough sell if you're used to modern games. If you're a Japanese learner by any chance, check out the Japanese PSN store, the game's pretty cheap. The vocabulary in the gameplay itself isn't so bad, but when you get the files, that's gonna be tough, so I definitely recommend keeping a dictionary with you. And at least you get to learn how to say Jill Sandwich in Japanese. That was too close. You were almost a Jill Sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life.